Hi, this is Dr. Terrell Booth, developer of Sensitivity Elimination Treatment by Dr. Booth or SETDB. Today I'm going to show you how to use three bile surveys that I recommend you use during an evaluation or perhaps a, a patient or client's first visit. I have the software in simulation mode at its fastest setting so when the scanning occurs it's going to go really fast. I've started the visit, I've named it, so let's go to the bile surveys tab. There are now 61 bile surveys that are available. The first three are the ones that, uh, that we're going to go over today. I'm going to show you how to use them. And again, they would commonly be used during evaluation or first or initial visit. All right, let's run the category scan. Category scan tests the patient's response to many different categories or custom collections that I have set up. Uh, and here they are. They now the names of the um, the names that you see here match the names of the bio survey, so it's really easy to correlate uh, which one you need to run. The software has chosen a range of 5.71. Typically on this initial visit, I like the range to be 5. So I'm going to change that to 5. And now everything over here that's 5 or greater is in red. You'll notice that they are sorted by absolute value because in sensitivity testing we ignore the negative symbol. All right, now everything that is checked on the left will show up on the report. So it's your choice if you want these so-called in-range items to show up. I would have them all print on the report, and I'll explain why in a minute. But if you don't want these items to show up, then just the easiest thing to do is to uncheck this in-range box. And now they're not checked anymore, and they won't show up. Uh, I like to leave it checked and I'll explain when I produce the report. So once you're happy with the way it looks here, the range and such, click next and it goes immediately to the report. Uh, we'll talk about each report when it's here on the screen, but if the patient's sitting in here in your office and you're running these, You'll just print them. You'll print this report, however many copies you need. Um, and then you'll run the next test. You'll print that report. And then you'll run the final test, which is the OSST evaluation, and print that. Then you hand the reports to the patient, and then you go over them. So we chose to have everything show up on this category scan. And it does. So you've got basically one page. You explain to the patient that everything that's below a 5 uh, probably wouldn't be that important to treat initially. You don't want to tell them that items down here, these categories, uh, will never need to be treated because uh, you want them to go through a food and nutrient group if they're not there for inhalant treatment. Uh, or you want them to go through all 10 inhalant groups if that's what they're there for. And so if grasses shows up here below a 5 and trees is just above it, you're still going to treat those groups. And here's why. Um, say in trees there might be 300 items in that custom collection. But they're only sensitive to 20. But they're really sensitive to them. So the category, the result of the category scan, might tend to be lower because they're not sensitive to most of the items in that custom collection. Ho hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but there might be some things in there that really need to be treated. And so that's why it's not a good idea uh, to just run this scan and then base your treatment program on the results of this scan. Uh, because that, that negates their history that negates the questionnaire and you want to you want to use all that information to figure out what's best to, 
to treat the patient for. Um, another example is, say, uh, seafood is here at a 10. And if you've got a, a nine-year-old patient who never eats any seafood, then you wouldn't want to treat that, uh, that category, maybe at all, um, unless, you're, unless they're going through the entire nutrient food groups. Okay, so that's how you use this report. Um, let's say that they're there for foods, that they've got food sensitivities, but they can't afford or they don't want to go through the uh, entire nutrient and food treatment program, then you would want to do amino acids and phenolics at the least. You want to do those first. You can make a case. Here's fatty acids, uh, sugars. Um, I don't know where minerals is without looking for it. Uh, you could make a case for going through more of them or going through all of the um, the nutrient groups first, uh, at least the ones that are five or higher. Vitamins is down near the bottom. And then you would might you might want to go and use your, again, your professional judgment, the patient's history. Grains would be a good one to do. I would do gluten and gliadin before grains, you know, if this were my patient. Um, sugars and sweeteners is important to do, and, and so on. All right, so then you would print it, and then when you're done printing it, come back to the Elite tab, I'm sorry, the Bile Surveys tab, and we're going to run the Common Foods. All right, this tests the patient's response to foods that people are most commonly sensitive to. The range st is set at 5, because you set it during the category scan, so everything below 5 does not... I mean, is out of range, but it's still checked. Now, when we do the common food scan, I like to uncheck that. Uh, it's already a long report, and so um, you don't need it to be longer. All right, so that's how I would do it. Click on Next. The report is generated. It's just a list of their response to these foods. In this case, it's going to go two pages. Okay. And so you print however many copies you're printing. Now let's say at some point you wanted to know, hey, what is what were these other foods down here that were in range? You can always go back to the Elite tab, click on the name of the bile survey, and all of the results are displayed on the right. So you never lose that information. All right, the last test or uh, bile survey I would run on the first visit is the OSST evaluation which is this one right here. OSST stands for Organ System Stress Test. And it is right above the regular OSST. If you run that one, you will generate a homeopathic formula, and that's not what you want to do on the first visit. So let's go ahead and run this bile survey. Now you'll notice that I only test organs, systems, and glands right out of uh, Zyto's library. Uh, I don't do teeth. I don't do um, meridians. I don't do uh, vertebra because here's the reason. I, I like to keep things as simple as possible. So if teeth show up on here then you've got to go through the whole explanation of teeth and health uh, and multiply that by if you have vertebra, um, you know, it's a little easier for chiropractors to tie that into stress and so on. But um, I like to keep it simple. And so on this report, I leave everything checked. The range is at five again. And we click on next. We get our report. It's a little more colorful. Uh, the range is over here in your cover sheet or header, but it's also in red here, and there's a line that makes it real easy to look at. Okay, and so this gets printed out when you talk to about the patient. Um, the first thing they're going to ask is, well, does this mean I have a disease in my central nervous system? What's wrong with my eyes? 
what's wrong with my lungs? Well, you don't know. Of course, uh, the Zydo software does not diagnose. It just is a tool to help you make smart decisions. And so you just explain that this is an indication of stress. You don't know what's stressing it. It's just an indication of stress. And all of them show, okay, down to here. And so again, you print this out. Now you have three reports um, to go over the patient. I would stack them in the order that they were performed. The report on top is the category scan, followed by the food scan, followed by this OST evaluation form. And then you start with the one on the top and you start talking about the category scan, etc. All right, so here's my contact information. If you have any questions, or you can go to the website setdb.com. Don't forget the dash. Uh, get a hold of me uh, and ask your questions. Um, thanks for watching today. Hope this has been helpful.